Good morning. Good morning. If you turn to Acts, the 12th chapter, we're going to start in verse 4. But first, I've got two scenarios we're going to talk about, hopefully, today, if I can get to both stories. And both stories is about prison. And both stories are men of God that were put in prison. So sometimes we think that we're unique, we're special, that even the ministry has prisons that we go through. So whenever I'm speaking today, it's not just because of individuals, it's all of us. We all have these little prisons that the devil likes to try to throw us into. <clears throat> And a prison is a place where convicted or those that are waiting for trial to go to. And we all know that Jesus Christ paid the price and we're all free. But yet the devil wants to give us and put us in prison. Many times I look back in my life and I see those little prison points in my life. And I hope I can be like Peter, Paul, and Silas. As now you can see who I'm talking about. I'm going to be hopefully sharing. I practice this. I always practice my sermons. and They all change all the time. Pastor made a joke earlier. I said, I may not get all the scriptures. He says, well, you never do. <laughs> Hunter said, said the same thing he said it's hard to follow you but we've got to go where the spirit of the Lord says to go and I believe in being led but we find in Acts the 12th chapter James the brother of John was killed by Herod and Herod thought it was such a good thing that he was going to do the same to Peter so he had him in prison. But it was during the Passover. You know what's unique about this story? The Passover. What happened at the Passover? The people of Israel were protected. The people that did not put the blood over the doorpost more or less was convicted and destroyed. But we take up in verse 4. It says, And when he had apprehended him, that's Herod, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers. That four quadrants is four groups of four soldiers. And I know old Peter cut off an ear when they came to get Jesus. But was that enough to have 16 soldiers to guard him? That shows you the power that Peter carried. But I'm here to say to you that the devil tries to throw his demons and his, in the, his evil forces against us because he knows what the power is in us. But we're going to find it didn't matter about those 16 people, 16 men. It says, uh, to, keep, to, keep him, to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. He was going to bring them before the Jews and, and kill him. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. We're going to find out here in a little bit the church was praying. They saw that James was crucified or killed. They were in there praying. We find that he, after Peter gets escapes, he escaped the prison of the devil. He went to the door and knocked and wrote a, a servant girl. Peter's here. And they were in there praying. No, no, you're hearing a ghost. You're seeing a ghost. But he came. And the church was praying that whole time continuously. 
You know, too many times we hear people say, well, you pray once, oh God, you, you touch someone, you heal someone, and then we stop praying. But here it says continuously pray. They were continuously praying. And church, we've got to continuously pray. Even if we're, if we're in the prison ourselves, or if we know someone that is in prison that has been kept by the, the enemy of God and the enemy of the church, because we, are, we belong to God, the devil wants to imprison us with our minds, with our thoughts, and with everything else that we have because he wants to keep us down. He doesn't want us to go and be the church and be the man of God, the woman of God, the child of God that he has called us to be. And it's time for us to realize that these prisons are not for us to stop here, but it's a, there's a purpose that we go through in whenever we go through these situations. In verse 6, and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was asleep between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Visualize with me. Here's Peter asleep. He's chained up. He's got one soldier on one side sleeping with him, another soldier on the other side, and then there's another guard watching. But he's asleep. We got on one side, you ain't worth it. God doesn't love you. You got the other side, here we go again. You trust in God, but he didn't save you. He didn't do what he said he was going to do. And then you got the chains that's keeping you, but you know, you're right. I can't move forward. I got, I got, I, I'm just a man. God doesn't really care. He's got all these other things that he's working about. The devil likes to come at us and put us in a situation like this that we cannot overcome by ourselves. But what I love about it, while Peter was sleeping between the two soldiers and the guards, and behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and light shined in the prison. I don't know about you, if I'm asleep and all of a sudden the light comes on, I wake up. But apparently, it didn't happen that way. And who is the light? The light is Jesus Christ. And he shines in us, and we're to be the light in this world. There's a prison. There's people in the prison with us. But yet, the light shines forth. And it says the angel hit. If you keep on reading, it says the soldier. The angel smote him. Let's read it. Uh, it says, light shined in the prison and smote Peter on the side. More or less like, wake up. Don't listen to these voices. Don't listen to those things. And it said, the angel set him up. And I can see him being laying down there and all of a sudden the angel taps him. Get up, Peter, get up. Raises him up to a sitting position. And there's five things the angel told him to do. For us to get out of our prison, we're going to have to do, we're going to have to act. We've been set free. Christ did it on the cross. But there are things that we have to do to begin to get our freedom from the things that have kept us down. It said, uh, back to verse 7. Arise up quickly. The angel said, Arise. And whenever Peter jumped to his feet, this is the first one Arise. Don't get in the stay in the situation that you're in. Don't waller in the mud like a like a pig with the swamp, you know, the swine with the pearls. Mm -hmm. Rise up. And it says, and as his chains fell off from his hands. As he did what was commanded from God, he rose and those chains just dropped. And I'm telling you, you and I today, whenever we begin to get in these situations in our life where we feel like we're imprisoned by the forces of the enemy, if we would just arise and shine for where the glory of the Lord comes, that's where we're going to find the victory. And those chains, those things that the devil thinks he's got us held and bound by, they're going to begin to fall off. Because we got to arise. We're rising to the, the, the call that God has given to us. And it says, And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself. 
I'm reminded in Ephesians, it says, gird thy loins with the truth. So while you're in this situation in the prison, he's still in the prison, but he's doing, he's moving, he's acting. It says, gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. Sandals means you're fixing to move, you're fixing to go, you're fixing to leave, you're fixing to do whatever God has called you to do. Too much of the time, we think that, well, oh, here, I can't do nothing. Uh, this thing's got me down. I'm, I, you know, it just, everything happens. I lose my job. I, I must be a worthless person. But he says, get your shoes on. Get ready. Or I know... T.D. Jacobs, get ready, 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 you know. <laughs> We've got to get ready because God is going to move in our lives. And he says, and so he did. And he saith unto him, cast thy garment about thee. And I'm reminded of Elijah when his servant said, I see a cloud. And it's about the size of a man's hand. He says, go down and tell the king it's going to rain. And he girded up his the garment around him, tucked it in. His They wore funny clothes back then. Some of them still do, but he tucked it in and he outran the horses. He outran the horses. Can you see a picture here? Peter doing all this. Most of us will say, well, God, why, why, why are we doing that? I mean, I'm in prison. I can't go nowhere. The gates are locked up. Everything is. I've got... Well, I did have chains, but they fell off. But, you know, what about everything else? What about this? What about that? Too many times the devil wants us to look at other things instead of what God is saying that for him to do. He had to wake him up, get his attention. Sometimes we need to be woken up today. And then he says, and follow me. What? The... Uh, 16 guards are right out there. Follow me. Well, you know, my family don't care too much for me and my way I, I think about the Lord and stuff. Follow me. The workers that I work with, they don't, they, they, they talk bad about me all the time. Follow me. And it says, and he, and went, and he went out and followed him and was not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. <clears throat> How many times have we experienced God doing a work in our lives and all of a sudden say, was that really God? Did God really do that? Or is that just something of my imagination? Did I, did I think that happened? No, it happened. It says, and when they were past the first and second ward, Oh, church, can you see what this is? Whenever he's walking past everything that's in the way, and all of a sudden it says he came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city. You know, we go to these stores now, and sometimes they open up automatically for us. Hey, they robbed that from this scripture right here. <laughs> they robbed that. It says, because whenever he leadeth unto the city, which opened to them on his his own accord and they went out church whenever we began to allow the presence of God and the anointing of God to break the chains that have bound us those things that have hurt us those things that have caused us to stay back and we began to follow after God those barriers we come up to the bars that haven't been able to be moved they sit there you can see the things that god wants done you can see the things that's outside you can see what's happening and you go god why can't i obtain that why can't i reach to it he says just follow me and he began to walk and those gates are opened wide so that yes. he could go yes. out into the city and then he went it says he went you keep on reading it says he went past two streets and he looked back and the angel was gone but you know today the holy spirit is with us all the time he is with us every step of the way. He is walking with us and he is opening doors that he wants to be opened in our lives that we have felt like have been shut up and clammed up and nobody can get it. It's all rusty and everything else. But as we begin to follow after God, those doors are going to be open and that no man can shut what God opens up. Too much of the time we're back there listening to those two soldiers between us 
You can't do it. God ain't going to do it. God's not going to move. God's not got the... You don't have the anointing on your life. God's not answering your prayers. But he says, get up and quit listening to those voices. Get up and move. And I've already talked about where Peter knocked on the door. But it says in Peter continued in verse 16, knocking. He continued to knock. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But Peter beckoned unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declaring to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Sometimes when God sets us free, when he opens the doors and we go to our family, we go to other people, we began to tell them, say, whoa, whoa, here's Peter. Don't you say another word because what was going to come out? How are you here? You were in prison. Did they let you go? What took place? And he said, hold it. Be quiet. Be quiet because I'm going to tell you what took place. The word of my testimony, the word that comes out of my mouth is exalting the Father, my God. And he says, I don't want to hear any of your garbage telling me that this is not God. I'm here to tell you the angel of the Lord came and he, he told him the whole story again and said, go tell all everybody else. God is a powerful God. God is moving in power and might in our lives. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he did for Peter, he wants to do for us in the spiritual realm. And he wants us to be able to walk and to be free from all sorts of evil things that the devil wants to keep, keep us down. He's, a, he's here to rob, kill, and destroy. And we've got to learn to allow God to, to do some things in our lives that we never realized would happen. I don't know if y'all noticed, I've got my Bible today. I'm not using my iPad. Because I want to share what the Lord has really showed me. Instead of trying to go follow on my notes. Because too many of us are, are in a situation in our lives where we've allowed the enemy to keep us down. To keep us chained up. Sometimes it's innocent things that's been said. It's innocent things that may have taken place and we take it the wrong way. There may be certain situations in our lives that we perceive to be wrong and it binds us down. But that's all the attack of the enemy that wants to come and to hold us back from really getting into the place into the relationship with Jesus Christ that he is desiring for us to be. Sometimes we look, well, God, why am I being, why am I sick? Why am I this? Why am I that? Just begin to quote the word. Begin to have people who will pray for you. And then in, let's go to chapter 16, verse 13. It says, then on the Sabbath, here's another Sabbath. We went of the city by a river. Whenever we talk about the river, we talk about the river of God. And when prayer was what to be made, we sat down and spake with the women which were forth there. Here, Paul and Silas was led to this city. And the first thing they did, they found a group of prayers. They found the people that were praying. Then you go down to verse 16. And it came to pass as, as we went to pray, a certain damsel, and we know she had all these thoughts and she could speak in deviation, divination. And we know the story where Peter said, come out of her. Demanded the spirit to come out. Doing what was right. Doing God's work. Being a, the men of God. Her rulers, her bosses took him before the city and said, you know, these men are teaching things that's not contrary to the Roman rules and beat them and cast them into prison. Go to verse 22, 23. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust 
them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Here we go again in a prison. First of all, let's look at the prisons of today versus the prisons of last of this time. The prisons of today have got color TV, they got radios, they got uh, nice beds, they've got <laughs> air conditioning, AC, running water, maybe the toilet's not the best place. But the time that Paul and Silas was, it was a dark hole. It's dingy. It smelled. It had running water, but the running water was all over the floor. You tried to find a place to sleep, and they just piled you in it. But here they put Paul and Silas in the inner court. Why does God allow them to be put into the inner court, the center of it? Everybody around them, they must be some mean hombres because they're, they're putting them in the middle, out there where it's the farthest from the able to be escaped. Is that what the devil does? He tries to make you think that there is no hope. God is so far from you. It says, in, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. The significance about midnight, midnight is mentioned 14 different times in the Bible. Midnight is the end of one day and the beginning of a new day. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're in prison today, but it is our midnight, and it is a new day. God has wanted us to realize that this is a new day because he's coming in to take away those chains, those boundaries that we have allowed to keep us tied up, bound up. But, you know, they were in the middle. It says it's praising God and praying. And all the prisoners heard them. Here's my vision of it. They're in there saying, God, I thank you. We're in prison, but I know you're here. I know you're with us. I mean, we know Paul talks that way because we read the other scriptures that he sent and read and wrote. <clears throat> he rejoiced, even though I'm in prison, yet I will praise you. Then he begins to say, God, I thank you I'm here. But more of all, I know that you're with me. And you're helping me. You're with me. I don't care what the circumstances look like. I don't care what the situation is. It's not the situation that you're in. It's the attitude. Oh, yes. That we've got to learn to begin to praise God in whatever situation. In all things, give thanks unto God. And I can see Paul and Silas just praising God. And then all of a sudden you read on, it says there was an earthquake that took place. It shook everything. It even made the walls to, to come, the, all the doors to open. And every prisoner in that place's bands were broken and set free. Out of the praise and worship. And we saw with Peter, they were praying for him and God delivered him out. Here, Paul and Silas was praying. Sometimes we need to get away from everybody else and just begin to pray and seek God. Sometimes we may need to bring a brother or a sister with us and say, hey, all I want to do is go pray and worship God. All I want to do is pray and worship God. And we'll begin to see that the earthquakes in people's lives and in the prison doors and people that we, we may be not the ones that's going through the prison at that time. But there's somebody we know that is and we need to be continually praying for them and seeking God for them. <coughs> Excuse me. And because of that, the keeper of the inn or keeper of the prison came in. He's going to kill himself. And he, Paul says, whoa, don't do that. Because he feared every one of those prisoners left the building. You know, if I was a murderer, and I was in prison and the door is open, I'd escape as soon as I possibly can. But there are people that the devil has convicted 
and tried to sentence. And whenever we began to pray and worship and exalt God, those chains that have got them down is going to cause them to be alert and to be wanting to know more about what was going on. It's, it's strange. You see all these riots where people's running away from getting out of the jail. They're, they're escaping. But these guys just sit there. And I guarantee you they heard what the jailer asked. What must I do to be saved? And all of a sudden Paul again said, here's what you got to do. And I, you know, it says that the jailer's family all were saved and brought to the, he took them to his house. He, wound, he covered up their wounds and he was baptized, him and his whole family. Just because he was thrown in jail. The devil thought he had him. Just like he said, thought he had Jesus. We got him. No, you don't have him. This is what God's going to do. If we just allow him to come into our, in our, our midst and quit looking at our prison situations as dreaded things, but we began to look at it and say, God, I know there's a reason, there's a purpose, and I'm going to exalt you. I'm not going to listen to the, the noises around me, but I'm going to praise you, and I'm going to serve you. And you go to verse 37. I'm skipping some here. Hunter. <laughs> and Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. And now do they thr thrust us out privately? Nay, verily, let them come themselves and fetch us out. And the surgeons told these words unto the magistrates and they feared when they heard that they were Romans. And they came and besought them and brought them out and desired them to depart out of the city. Church, whenever we began to allow God to move in our lives, those things, those enemies, they're afraid because you replace that word Romans Believers in Jesus Christ. We are the anointed. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. We are a royal priesthood. We are the holy nation. And the devil tries to come and destroy and to take us down. But he's got another thing. He's not going to secretly get away from us. No. We're going to be like Peter. Let me tell you what happened. I was in prison. The gates broke down and we were able to win the souls of lives, people's hearts, because they saw what God's power can do. And that's where we've got to get to in a place in our own lives where we say, God, I come before you and I trust in you. And I know that in, in you all things are possible. It may look despair, but I know for a fact that you are on the throne and you have gotten these chains that have been bound to me to hold me back. They're gone. They're released. They're, they're not with us no more. I can move forward with you in power and might because you are the one that's doing it all. It's not me. It's you. And whenever we began to get in that situation in our hearts and our lives, we began to see that we have victory. Even like Jesus said, or I have victory over death. We have victory over the things that Satan wants to put upon our hearts and our lives. And it's time for us to listen with our ears spiritually and begin to do what he says to do. Whenever he says arise, gird yourself, put on your shoes, begin to be ready to move, begin to be ready to take part and do what needs to be done and begin to praise and worship me. And as we praise and worship through the praise and worship, it says in the presence of the praises of people, I am in their midst. Think he's there for, oh, woe is me. Despair and agony. You know, we've all seen Hee Haw. Some of us, maybe. Yeah. But I mean, it's so much better, so much more joy when we hear the praises of what God's done. And our testimony is that of Jesus Christ. And what he wants to do in our lives and in our hearts. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you that you're coming to our little prisons. 
Lord, we think they're big. That you, you see them and you know that there's nothing too hard. There's nothing too difficult for you to do. We see through this word of God that you've done many, many things that seemed impossible. A young boy sling a shot and kill a giant. Natural eye is impossible. Lord, the things that we're going through in our own lives, God, we pray. Lord, you see each prison that is trying to keep your people down. Lord, I ask that you would move right now in your power and your might to awaken us up, to cause us to rise above the situation, that we'll see that the chains and the bars and the doors are being opened as we walk towards you and as we follow after you, God, that you will move in power and might in the lives of each individual, God. Lord, that we'll look back and we say, God, we thank you. We know we were bound by Satan in some areas of our life, but you have set us free. And today we are moving forward and we're going to declare this day is a new day because it is our midnight hour that we have a new life, a new plan, a new excitement because you have set us free. And your word says, he that is free is free indeed. And surely today, Lord, we just thank you that your mercy and your grace covers everything. All the chains has to leave. All the bondages have to leave. And Father, we just ask that you'd clean our minds so we see and hear you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.